Bow te. Welcome to our broadcast today. My name is Pastor Dan Rottenberg. On behalf of Native Christians, I'd like to welcome you to this broadcast today and ask that God blesses his word today that we'll study together. Let's begin with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for keeping us safely through the night from all harm and danger. Thank you for bringing us safely to this new day. We ask you to bless us. We know that each day is a gift of your grace, and your mercies are new every morning. We ask you to be with us this day. We ask you to be with us as we study the word together. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts and minds. Help us to grow in our understanding of the things you want us to know. Help our faith to grow as we grow deeper in our faith and our trust relationship with you. We ask that you would continue to guide us in all things. Help us to live each day for your glory. Bless us and our families and our communities. Help us to serve you more and love you more every day. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Friends in Christ, we'd like to welcome you today. We're in the middle of a sermon series called The Lies We Believe. You know that Satan is the father of lies, and uh, he, he has a lot of help. He has a lot of help from people in this world. He has a lot of help from the sinful nature right inside of us. When we listen to his lies, when we believe his lies, or even repeat his lies, it can really hurt ourselves. It really hurts us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And that's Satan's goal. The only cure is the truth of God's word. Today we want to talk about a really destructive lie that hurts us in so many ways. It's the lie that, that deals with pleasing people. The idea that we have to have everyone's approval. We want people to like us, and sometimes that causes us to act in ways that are dangerous and harmful to us and, and our faith and the people around us. And we want to hear what God has to say. God will tell you who you are in Christ, and it will change your life. I want you to hear that uh, today. The, the scripture that we're going to study today is from Romans chapter 8. We're going to read selected verses as we go through the text today. So if you have your Bibles at home, you can uh, open them up to Romans chapter 8. We're going to start at verse 1 and go from there. And we'll go through that as we, as we walk through our text um, for today. Before we start doing that, though, Let's get this lie out in the open. And I want to ask you an honest question. An honest question. Do you care about what other people think about you? And before you get all show or tough guy, I should say, I don't care what anybody thinks of me. Lying's a sin, remember? So be honest. <laughs> be truthful. How much of what you do in life, how many of the decisions you make, are ones that you make because you want someone to like you. You want people to like you. You want their approval. Do you ever find yourself talking differently because the person that you're talking with is, is different? So you adjust the way that you talk to match them? Do you ever find yourself being interested in something that you're really not interested in? Or, you know, you're pretending, you're pretending just because you want someone to like you or you want someone to approve of you. Do you ever think about what you wear? What logo or what emblem is on your clothing? Do you need to wear a certain brand? Do you need to have a certain style of clothing to blend in with the people around you? Do you, do you put on makeup? Do you, do you try to look a certain way? try to have a certain hairstyle do you do you look at what the influences are saying on social media to see what's popular uh, because somebody else bought something you have to go get it too how much of that and especially maybe the biggest example of that is in social media um what do you post on social media 
Do you, when you post a picture of yourself, do you have to like rearrange it? Do you have to spend a half an hour trying to arrange yourself in just that particular pose where you look great? And then you use two or three or four filters that you're trying out just to try to find out which way makes you look the best. Do you get concerned about how many likes you get on a post that you make or how many views or how many people follow you? Or do you sometimes like somebody else's post even though you really don't like it, but you feel like you have to because you don't want them to be angry with you? You feel like you have to support them or defend them because that's your friend or someone that you're trying to impress? How much of your life is putting on a show? Pretending, how easy is it to lose yourself because you're worried about what everyone else thinks? Change the way you talk, the way you look, the way you act to impress someone else, to please someone else. See, that way of thinking that desire to please everyone else, it's kind of like an addiction. It's hard to break. And it will eventually destroy you. See, trying to please everyone will never work. And the most obvious reason is this. No matter what you do or how you act or what you say, there's always going to be someone in the world who doesn't like you. You realize that, don't you? that you will never please everyone all the time. Not even Jesus could do that. Think of Jesus. Jesus never did anything wrong. Never. <laughs> he never said the wrong thing, never did the wrong thing. He was so kind, so helpful, so compassionate, so caring about the well-being of everyone else around him. And still there were people that hated him with a passion. You know that, right? Even if you're perfect, people hate you. Jesus said, you know what? If, if you follow me, there are going to be people who don't like you simply because you follow me. Because you call yourself a Christian. They're not going to like you because you remind them of all the things they're doing wrong. You make them feel guilty about themselves, about what they're doing. Not everyone's going to like you. And trying to please everyone is going to put you in an emotional spin cycle that you're not going to recover from because if your happiness in life depends on everyone else and how they think of you, you can't control everyone else. You're never going to find the happiness that you're looking for can't please everyone. Especially today, we want to look at this, this lie that Satan tells to us, because you know what? Trying to please everyone can also get you in big spiritual trouble. Remember that you are a sinful person and you live in a sinful world, right? And the Apostle Paul put it like this way to the Galatians. He says, am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. That's the unfortunate thing, that trying to please everyone in this world is probably going to mean that you have to do something that you know is wrong. Trying to make everyone here happy means that you're going to do something that displeases God. Because that's what sinful people do. Sinful people use you. Sinful people manipulate you. They exploit you. As I mentioned, sometimes it's out of guilt. If people around you are doing something that they know is wrong, and you're not, they're going to feel bad about it. And they're going to do everything they can to get you to join in. They're going to use you, manipulate you, exploit you. Think about how this happens. How many husbands or wives have, have been in this situation where one person starts drinking and they just get mad at you if you don't? 
They're not going to be happy until you start drinking with them. And you do it. You do it to please them, to keep the peace. They make fun of you if you're not going down with them. You know that it's bad for your family. You know that it's bad for you, for everyone. And it's a sin against God, but you do it anyway because you're trying to make that other person happy. And a lot of times people do things because they want something. There's a story about a man who faked a kidnapping on his front lawn of his house. Why? Because he wanted to go out with his friends and drink and watch the big game. He didn't want to spend that day with his wife and his family behaving. He wanted to go get drunk with his friends and watch the game at their place. So he faked a kidnapping. That's what people do. That's the twisted part of the sinful nature. They will use you, manipulate you, exploit you to get their way. They'll say anything to you to get what they want. How many men have done that to young ladies? And how many ladies have thought, well, if I have a baby for someone, I'll keep that man around. just using you. They'll say what they want to say. They'll do what they have to do to get their way. Even when you know it's wrong. In our community, it's common for people to give somebody a feather or a stone. They want you to participate in a traditious, traditional ceremony. And you know that it's not right. You know it's not the same God. You know that's not going to bless you. You don't want to do it. But sometimes your own friends and family put the pressure on you. And you know sometimes your own family is going to be worse than anyone else. They won't help you. They won't support you. They won't be there for you. They won't invite you to anything anymore if you don't do what they want you to do. It doesn't matter if your conscience is bothering you. It doesn't matter if it's a sin against God. Sometimes people give in, don't they? Because they know that their family is never going to forgive them. They're going to hold that grudge forever. And they're afraid. That's where we get into spiritual trouble, isn't it? When we're more afraid of losing people's approval than we are of losing God's approval. Jesus talked about that too. In Matthew chapter 10, as he was sending the disciples out, he said, you know, not everyone's going to like what you're preaching. They're going to hate you because they hate me. But don't be afraid of them. In fact, he said, if you want to be afraid of these people who are threatening you, he's like, if you want to be afraid of somebody, shouldn't you be more afraid of the one who can not only hurt your body, but throw your soul and body into hell? Shouldn't we all be more afraid of God than any sinful person on this earth? That's hard, isn't it? Even when Jesus says it. Sometimes we want everyone here to like us to approve of us. And we'll do things to please them, even if those things displease our God. We've all been there. We've all been more afraid of losing someone else's approval than God's. And friends, there's two directions that we can go. Two roads. First road is to be proud. Stubborn, defiant. Say, well, God, I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. And we walk away from God or run away from God so that our life on earth is a little bit easier. There's another road, though. You can turn to God. Turn to God in humility. Turn to God in broken-hearted repentance. Friends, out of those two roads, only one of them 
leads you anywhere good. The other one leads only to death. Satan wants you to take that road. He wants you to be proud and stubborn, angry. He wants you to sell God out for an easier time here, an easier life. That road leads to death. God begs you not to take that road. God begs you in his word to turn to him instead. And friends, I also, I beg you, turn to God. Turn to God. Because when you do, when you, when you see that God's approval is the only one that matters, when you turn to God in broken-hearted repentance, he won't let you down. He will tell you instead the most beautiful words that you could ever hear. If you look in your Bibles, there in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says this, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. So he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Do you know what that means? Let's translate that. Let's make it very simple. There is no condemnation for you and for me who are in Christ Jesus, because God condemned Christ Jesus in our place. Hear those words. There's no condemnation for you and for me because Jesus Christ was condemned in our place. God accepts you and me because he condemned Jesus in our place. This is such a tragic and beautiful story. Tragic because it was the only way that we could be saved. Beautiful because God wanted to do it. Jesus wasn't unwilling in this. It wasn't like, do I have to? No, Jesus said, I want to. This is my plan too. I will do this. I will live for them. I will die for them. I will pay for every single one of those disgusting sins. I will do this. I will be condemned so that they won't be. I will be punished so that they won't be punished. That's what Jesus has done. Anyone who is in Christ is free from condemnation. There is no guilt in life and no fear in death. No fear of punishment at all because Jesus was punished already. That's the best news in all the world. I want you to hear and marvel at those words, how unique they are. You won't find them in any other religion, and no one else can say them. Only Jesus can do this. Only in Christ is there no condemnation. This was God's plan. This was God's way of saving you. God's way of showing his incredible love for you. And there is such a difference. God's begging you to take this way. Begging you to take the gift that he's offering you. Because without it, there's nothing. Can you see the contrast today? I want you to see the contrast between Satan's way and God's way. Paul lays it out. He continues in Romans in verse 13. He says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. 
The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. By him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. If we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If we indeed share in his sufferings, that we may also share in his glory. Friends, there could not be a bigger difference between Satan's way and God's way. Between Satan's approval and God's approval. Between Satan's intentions and God's intentions. Between Satan's future and God's future. In Satan, you are used, exploited, manipulated, dragged down because misery loves company. And Satan is the ultimate loser. He hates you. He wants nothing but to drag you down and make you lose out on the best gift that's ever been put in front of you. People talk about the fact that only God can judge me. And yes, he will. But friends, that is a terrifying thing on Satan's path. God will judge you. And without Jesus, it's not going to go well. There is a fearful price to be paid for a lifetime of sin, and Satan knows that. But it's a completely different story on God's path. When God says, here, I've solved the problem for you. I've condemned my son, Jesus, who was perfect and deserved nothing like that. I condemn him in your place. And he paid for every single one of your sins. It's yours. Please take it. With Jesus, you have no guilt in life. Jesus has taken it away and you have no fear in death. You face judgment with Jesus right next to you, covering you with his righteousness, washing you clean of all of your sins, saying this is not someone who deserves to be punished. This is family. And God looks at you and says, you are my son, my daughter, my child. You're not a slave. You're a son. You're not someone to be used and exploited and dragged down. You're someone I dearly love. Jesus gave his life for yours and for mine. That's how Paul finishes the last chapter of Romans. He says, do you really think anything will make God stop loving you? No way. He says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There could not be a bigger difference between Satan and God, between Satan's path and God's path, what Satan wants for you and what God wants for you. Being in Christ makes all the difference. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It's a beautiful thing, friend. Let it change your life today. From here on out, make it your goal to please God. You don't have to please everybody else. You don't need everyone else's approval. There's only one who matters, God and his approval, and he loves you. He has accepted you in Christ Jesus he has forgiven your sins. He has adopted you. And you belong to him now. You are a dearly loved child of God. Make it your goal to please him. Live your life for an audience of one. 
the God who loves you, the God who gave his life for you, the God who takes away your guilt and the God who gets away your fear of death. He deserves it. He does. Friends, I don't want my sinful nature running my life anymore. Don't want that sinful flesh. Whatever in my life that is against God, whatever makes me weak, whatever makes me afraid, whatever makes me doubt, the things in my life that are opposed to God and rebellion against God, I don't want those things anymore. Get rid of them. I want them gone. I don't want those things running my life, my sinful impulses, my sinful desires, my sinful flesh. I don't want those things running my life anymore because my life belongs to Jesus now. I only live for one person's approval. And that's my Savior. You are free from trying to win everyone else's approval. It's all about Jesus. May God bless you and give you that courage and that confidence and that peace and that happiness and joy. In Jesus' name, amen.